started today with Matthew chapter 26. Um, The plot against Jesus. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was uh, Cephas, or Cephas, uh, and they plotted to arrest Jesus in some sly way and kill him. But not during the feast, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. Okay, so this is our Lord and Savior Jesus. He's telling, talking, and he's told his disciples over and over again what is to happen. Uh, he's also told them in parables why he was there, you know. And so uh, his disciples didn't quite understand at this point, but they will. They will understand everything, everything, uh, particularly when the Holy Spirit comes in. Um, but they, as of right now, they're still they're learning from him. They're still trying to understand. They're trying to understand what he, uh, what our Lord and Savior Jesus is conveying, the messages, the reason for everything. And so <clears throat> here you have Jesus in his life. Um, around this time, he was pre- uh, preaching the gospel, his own word, <laughs> basically. And he also was healing and uh, helping people, helping his disciples, helping uh, having his disciples help others, um, fulfilling the law, literally. And you have the elders and the priests and the people who uh, were supposed to be practicing, supposed to be uh, believing in, in God um, completely against this person, whether it be out of jealousy, whether it be out of um, wickedness, pure wickedness, because truthfully speaking, they weren't following what the Lord's instructions were. And time and time again, Jesus pointed that out to them, but they didn't want to hear or listen to it because they were, self, they were self-righteous. They were self-satisfied and no one could tell them what, you know, uh, any correction. And I mean, for who to be corrected by, hey, amen, hallelujah, I would <laughs> let me, Jesus, God almighty, let me be corrected by you. And so <clears throat> the people, um, this is getting ready to be the t- um, more feasts and more things were happening in Jerusalem. And so the priests even knew that the people respected overall respected Jesus because he was for the people. He was helping the people. He was of the people. And he didn't, uh, he, he wasn't trying, he wasn't a person to separate and use like it, it, he was better than everybody, even though he was, you know, <laughs> even though he, you know, even though he is God. Right. Uh, but he, he was there. He said, you know, uh, let me wash your feet. Let me help you. Let me, uh, be a servant unto you because uh, that's who our Lord and Savior is. He is God. He cares for us. He created us after his own image and then came to live and complete the law. So that way we too could have salvation and be saved for all eternity. And here are these uh, priests and these people. They, they didn't want to hear the correction. They weren't for it. They were against it. What they didn't realize is even though their wickedness, even through their wickedness, the Lord could still utilize that. Wow. Exactly. So bringing past to present, there's a lot. There's sermon upon sermon here. Um, There's a lot here. Uh, One thing that can be taken, people may think, hey, I'm going to be evil. I'm going to be facetious and everything. But the Lord can turn things around not only can he turn things around but he can shove it back into those into those the those faces he can also utilize it to show his holiness his, the difference between evil and good the difference between wicked and holiness and to show and to use it to fulfill his will his own will because nothing can stop the Lord's will. Amen and hallelujah. And that includes for you. Things may happen to us, to you, to us, to family members, to loved ones. And 
what we are to do is seek the Lord and draw strength from him and know that he's the good shepherd and know that good things come from above. Amen and hallelujah. Before we go on, though, because there's a lot to cover. There's a lot of things, even in those uh, for, uh, first verses. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? <laughs> 